Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Darren. I hope you're all safe and well and having a good stitchy week. So today we're going to do a stitch with me on a mini top frog. But if I do a stitch with me, it gives me more chance to get on it so I can catch a lara up. <laughs> so um, this is Heaven and Earth Designs and it's artwork by Jodie Bakesma. Excuse the noise. <laughs> so I should hopefully have you all where I need you to be. <laughs> so if you hear any noise at the side of me, I've got Ginger at the side of me, uh, giving himself a bath. <laughs> so, hopefully I'll keep my fingers out of the way. So this is the project with Nearly every single shade of green you could possibly think of that DMC do. And we're about to use all of them. I'm just looking for ones with big blocks because this, with this one being max color, a lot of the stitches are one here and one there, and got a lot of starting and finishing threads. So I'm trying to pick the ones with. The most kind of colours in the area. Now, can you even see where I am? No. Well, well you can't just. <laughs> yeah, right on the edge of the screen. So, yesterday was my three year anniversary of doing floss tubes. So if you haven't checked out my update video yet, head on over there, there's a giveaway going. And with this one, I will be going here, there and everywhere, no doubt, because although this one's got a lot of colors in it, they're not all in the same spot. So we're going backwards and forwards. <laughs> Now, there is a possibility I may have questions, <laughs> but at the moment I'm uploading my update video. So I haven't got a chance to go in and have a look for any questions. <laughs> hmm. So if the update, video, update finishes, I'll do a stitch with me and then have a look see if I've got any questions. Uh, work's going okay. For a couple of days I had no wood to cut on my saw. There was plenty of wood in the yard. Well, no one knew what they wanted me to cut on my saw. None of the managers. I was like, okay then. <laughs> so I've just been helping one of the other lads. Which makes a change from not actually being on my saw. Well, yeah, that all changed yesterday. <laughs> no, not yesterday. Thursday. Thursday afternoon that all changed. So now they've got plenty of wood for me to cut. The uh, main boss, him and his wife have gone away. Um, they went away Thursday, they're not back till Tuesday. Um, his wife is doing a, well the manager is just say, is doing a marathon down in Canberra. She said it sounded like a good idea when she signed up for it, and now she doesn't want to do it. <laughs> She's 66, I think. So yeah, good honor for doing a marathon at that, that age. I have all I'm trying to get my shoes on. <laughs> Figure out which way I'm going on this one. Yeah. 
You let it work. The one I ever told you who got laid off from his last job for trying too hard. And trying too hard it means brushing your hair a lot, then yeah, he worked really hard. He's still doing exactly the same. And he come in yesterday. And he asked one of the other lads if the the wood he was cutting was urgent. And he went, I don't know why. He says, oh, it's because I can't be bothered. He says, so I'm just gonna go in up somebody else on there. So he <laughs> was like, you don't work like that. So yeah, so, hence the reason he keeps wandering off, because he can't be bothered. So he did it all, he's all, well, he had one pack of wood up, and he's had this pack of wood up since, you can have the cockatoos, um, he's had this pack of wood up since Thursday, and he's still not finished it. Um, one of the other lads is on the same wood, it's gone through three, three packs so far. And yesterday, finished the uh, the young lad finished part of his pack, and the next thing he turned around, he was helping one of the other lads. It was like, oh, obviously, he's had enough of today. Then don't want to do any more. <laughs> that's not going to go down well when the boss finds it. The main boss, or the main boss already doesn't like him, and if the main boss doesn't like you, then he uh, he makes sure you know about it. So with the main boss away, obviously he was the other truck driver. So Shane's been busy. So he's been driving both trucks. He likes driving the boss's truck though, because that's a new one. Um, so it'd be a case of he'd go out with one load, come back and his truck would be loaded. And then he'd go out with that one, he'd come back and the boss's truck would be loaded here. <laughs> so we have, as I've mentioned before, we've got several managers at our place. Uh, so we've got the manager, the manageress, both their sons, and then the HR manager. So you would think with two of the managers not being there, that the other managers would be in. Nope. One manager was in, the one who deals with all the orders, loading and unloading of trucks. He was in. The other two, yeah. They came, the HR manager came in on Thursday and did four hours. And the other manager came in and he did probably around about the same. And then the other manager came in yesterday uh, so the, the brother uh, came in yesterday and did two and a half hours and then went home. I was like, what was the point coming in? So the, the other brother who deals with all the loads and that, he's been there all day. So he normally gets there. We start at half past six, he gets there about half past seven. Uh, so he, he gets there about half past seven and stays till everybody's gone. And sometimes even after, because he deals with sorting out, I'd say, all the loads and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so they've left everything up to him to do. So he's having to tell those guys what to cut on the saws and deal with orders and deliveries while the other managers stay at home and do nothing. <laughs> and probably get paid more than him. But never mind. So next week I can finally have a look into the new college course because that is all meant to be released Monday. I think it's Monday. 17th is when it's hopefully meant to be released. Um, so I was having a quick look online and it tells you roughly what the course is and what units and that you're going to be doing. And I think all the units are exactly the same as the ones I was doing in the last one that I had to drop out of. So obviously they must have just changed them around a bit or something, I don't know. And then uh, I thought, well, I'll have a look and see 
if I want to do it at college, how many days a week or whatever it would be. So if I wanted to do it full time, it would be four days a week at college. And I would have it all done within six months. I was like, right, well, I can't do it full time because obviously I work. I was like, right, let's have a look at part time. So if you want to do it part time, it is two days a week at college and you'll have it done within a year. And I was like, okay, that one's not too bad, but it depends on if it's full days at college or, or what and what days of the week it is at college. Because I was thinking, if needs be, I may. I think it's going to be easier to go to college and do the course. Um, but it would mean having to drop down to casual work instead of full time work. Which yes means I get more pay. Um, because your hourly rate goes up when you're casual over here. Um, so yes, you get more pay, but you don't get paid for any public holidays or anything like that. Um, but then it depends on how much it would work out I would get a week. Because obviously, I've still got bills to pay. So then it's like, okay. So let's have a look, see what it would be doing it online again. So online, it's 12 weeks per unit. So three months per unit. And this is what take a minimum of 18 months. What's that? Great. <laughs> Stuck at the timber yard for another 18 months. So, I might at some point venture down to the college itself and see if I can find out more information about it. About doing it at college. Because I think I'd prefer to do it at college because you've got the lecturer there explaining things. Instead of having to fathom them out yourself by reading it online and then Googling a lot and to see what they mean. So we'll see on that one. So hopefully I can start my college course again soon. Now from what I saw online, although the new course is available, if you like from Monday, the first part uh the first like unit or whatever doesn't start until sometime in May, and then after that, the next one is in July. And I was like, okay. So, we will see. Now, if you don't like messy backs, look away. <laughs> Oop. Smack me over. I think I'm still in. Right. Knocked it ever so slightly out. There we go. So last night, what were me and Shane on it about? I can't remember what I was talking about, but we were on about something and we got on about Jay's fluid. Now, I don't know if any of you guys know what that is, but we use it in the UK for like cleaning your patios and stuff like that. So basically it's like a disinfectant. And Shane was like, you need to buy some Jay's fluid. I was like, why do you do it over here? He went, I think we do. And it turns out you don't. You can order it over here. Um, but anyway, while I went searching for it, <laughs> I found a... It's called Best of British. Uh, the website was bestofbritish.com.au or something like that. And it was all British food. Uh, British Island... I think it's at Scotland. So, all foods from the UK. And it's like, cool. And they're not actually bad priced. So, of course, I started looking through there. 
some of them I've not heard of because so obviously it must be Irish or something like that, like certain brands of crisps and I was like I've not heard of them before. So I think some of them may be Irish or Scottish. But yeah, but there was loads of like UK foods in that then. It's like ooh, <laughs> and she says, "What are you ordering?" I was like, "I'm not ordering anything." <laughs> But yeah, you can get like your laundry detergents, uh, food, snacks. Uh, you can even get frozen food and that. But the downside to the frozen food is um, it comes via Australia Post. And Australia Post don't have refrigerated vans. So any food that you order from them will be defrosted by the time you get them if they're frozen, uh, because they come from WA, which is Western Australia. Um, so Shane's like, ooh, well, or even do your accountancy class, and then we can move to WA, uh, what, just so that you can get some English food. Yep. <laughs> okay, then, Shane. I'll just put that one in the wrong spot. It's like, have a look, see if they've got this. And it's like, no, they don't have that one, Shane. Oh, have a look, see if they've got this one. So, no doubt he'll be uh, looking on there later on. Well, yeah, it was good to see all the... Somewhere over here actually doing UK food that is actually UK food. Because... There's a few shops over here that claim that they are like British sweet shops and stuff like that, and they're not. <laughs> you go in and have a look around here, it's like, well, that's not UK sweets. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. <laughs> Trust me, I'm from there. I know what I'm talking about. It's like, we've never had that over there. So, yeah, you get some... That's say the British shops on the sublime food that's never been out in Britain. <laughs> well, we don't have that. Yeah, you do. No, we don't. <laughs> I love having arguments with them once. <laughs> right, once I finish this strand, my video is uploaded. So, I'll pause it and go and have a look for questions. So, my brother's still waiting on his test results. Apparently, they told him they will contact him when they've got the results. Normally, you have to go back to your doctors. And they will contact him when they've got the results, but there is a backlog at the moment, they're behind. I was like, hmm, typical. So he's just got to wait around now for those. Mum's doing okay. She had a fall the other day, she had a dizzy spell and fell over. Luckily, she didn't hurt herself too bad. She cut one of her hands on the fireplace, but that was about it. Um, my, my brother was there, so he helped her up on her feet again. I still haven't started building the conservatory yet. My brother was doing it. He was finishing another um, extension off, I think he was finishing off, so he needed to finish that off first before he could start on Mum's conservatory. So, hopefully maybe this week or next week they'll be starting that.
So it was cooling down over here. The nighttime temperatures were getting to a nice, nice temperature for sleeping in. So getting down to like nine degrees at night and the daytime temperatures had dropped out of the thirties down to like mid twenties. Yeah. So today we're meant to be 28, tomorrow 32. Nighttime temperatures are going back up to 17, 18 degrees. It's like, great. Just as it was cooling down, it's warming up again. So hopefully, it won't be long now before it does actually start cooling down properly. Although it doesn't stay cool for too long, only a couple of months, maybe about three months, and it starts warming up again. But never mind. Oh, um, I don't know if I told you we had lorikeets coming into the yard. We didn't have many. We only had maybe four or five. So, me being me. Right, we'll buy some. It's called honey uh, nectar mix or something like that. And I thought, right, well, we'll buy some of them for the, some of that for the lorikeets. So, trying to figure out how to make it up because the instructions on the packet are not the best. So, I made some up and put it out. And. The few lorikeets that we did have were straight into it, same as the noisy miners, because they eat nectar and that as well. So it's like, okay. <laughs> and every day we put this stuff down now. We only put it down when we finish work. So we put it down every day. And bear in mind, we've only started doing this since Monday, I think it was Monday. Yeah, so we started off with. As I say, about five or six, I think it was maybe six, six lorikeets. Now, I was at the dentist yesterday. Um, and when I finished, I phoned Shane up to see if we needed anything from the shops. And he says, no. He says, but he was feeding the lorikeets. And I was like, all right. And <laughs> he says, there are hundreds of them. He says, there must be at least 60 lorikeets turned up when he's put this food down. So we've gone from six to about 60. <laughs> so I was just laughing my head off. So when I come back from the dentist, Shane was there and he'd made up some more of this mix for the lorikeets. And there was like four lorikeets there. And I was like, mm, where's all these lorikeets, you said? He said, oh, they've all flown off. Anyway, they all started coming back gradually one by one. And I was counting them as they were coming in. and. I got up to 30. <laughs> so, I don't know where the other 30 are that Shane reckon we had, but yeah. Um, so yeah, we've got at least 30 lorikeets <laughs> now. And it's like, okay. So they, they are quite comical when, they eat, when they're eating this stuff. They all fight each other, try and get in. It's like, there's plenty of room because we put it on um, like deep dishes. So there's like two dishes out. So there's enough room for everyone. But no. Nah, they all want to gather around this one plate. And it's like, move to the other plate. It's right next to it. But yeah, boy, do they demolish them quickly. <laughs> it doesn't take them two minutes and it's all empty. So, yeah, so it's, it's been fun. <laughs> and then this morning, got up and you could hear the lorikeets tweeting in the tree outside. And she's like, oh, the lorikeets are coming in. He said, they're all here. I said, well, I said, it's up to you. I said, we can feed them or you can wait until tonight. And he said, oh, we'll feed them. So I made some makes up, went and put it out. There was four lorikeets. I said, I thought you said there were a load of lorikeets here. I said, there's four. That's it. He says, there were loads. I said, obviously not. Anyway, five minutes later, I looked out the window. Yeah, there were about 18 or so. <laughs> I was like, okay, we've got a few. But there's one, he was a bully. He kept, every time certain lorikeets tried to get to the food, he would chase them off and he wouldn't let anyone get to the food. 
So Shane went, right, that's it, I'm making up another bowl of it. So he made up another bowl and put it on the other side of the grass. <laughs> Just so the other lorry geeks could get to it. So yeah, so we now have plenty of lorikeets. <laughs> but never mind. I like the colours of them. So if I can get any pictures or videos of them all tonight, I'll add it into the stitch with me so you can see it. But yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> and then we had a couple of cockatoos come in the yard. We've never had the cockatoos in the yard. You just hear them flying over. And we ended up with three of them uh, looking for food the other day because we put a bit of bread out for the pigeons <laughs> and the crows. Um, so, yeah, so we had uh, cockatoos in looking for the bread. So we had a couple of them. It's like, oh, we don't want to start with them coming in here because they're noisy beggars. But luckily, they didn't stay long. <laughs> They've not been back since, so hopefully <laughs> they're not going to keep coming. So, right, I'm just going to pause you here then, guys. So, what, we're at 26 minutes. Um, and then I'll have a look, see if we've got any questions, because my video's uploaded. And I'll be back. Okay, we're back. So, I've been through and had a look for questions. So I've got a couple of questions. I found the next colour I'm going to be using, because this one's got a fair bit of colour in this. Well, a fair bit of these. It's, yeah, again, another shade of green. <laughs> so, right. Oops, apologies. So the first question I have got is from Sue, who this was from. Some of these videos go, uh, questions go back a bit. Uh, <laughs> this one was for Easter. He said, enjoy your long Easter weekend. Um, so your favorite cat is a cheetah, right? So why do you stitch so many tiger charts? <laughs> I was just wondering why that is, as I saw the tigers coming out all over the place. The tiger charts are all gorgeous. I'm just wondering why it's so little cheetahs. So the reason why they're so little cheetahs is because not many people chart cheetahs. <laughs> um, so yes, cheetahs are my favourite cat. Um, dolphins are my favourite animal. So yes, I really should have some more dolphin charts on the go as well. Um, but yeah, cheetahs are not charted very often. It's all tigers and lions, uh, mainly. What most people chart. It's not very often you see the cheetahs. Um, I know there are a couple on Artisy. I've got two, two of those, I think, to, to stitch. But yeah, but that would be why there's not many cheetahs on the go because most people don't chart cheetahs it's just lions and tigers and bears oh my no <laughs> yeah, it's just lions and tigers man so that's why you don't see so many cheetahs if i could find more cheetah charts then yes i'm actually working on trying to chart a cheetah pattern myself um, some of the pictures just don't turn out as good as I wanted them to. I've got one I think is turning out okay, but we'll see how that continues. from Sue. <laughs> One is from Shadow Shadow. 
Oh, on one of my social media, I mentioned I had the ocular migraines and the dizziness. And she wants to know if there's anything that you can actually do for them. Um, ocular migraines, no. Um, opticians are not 100% sure what causes those. Um, they generally go on their own after about, up to normally last up to 30 minutes. Um, most people just shut their eyes and for 30 minutes. Well, in my case, it was an hour. <laughs> And it just goes, it just goes on its own. But it's quite funky. So yeah, there's not much really you can do for those dizziness. Fortunately, if it's vertigo, there's not much that they can do. Um, I think they give medication um, for that one. Uh, but that can take a, take a while to uh, disappear. Something to do with your inner ears or something like that. So, um, but touch wood. I haven't had any dizzy spells for a while now, so hopefully it's over and done with. <laughs> I'm hoping. And I've only had the one ocular migraine, so... Fingers crossed I don't get any more of those. So that was that question. Um, next one is from Dawn. So, when I was stitching on my Majestic's tag, I mentioned that the, the 20 count that I got, the grid wasn't lined up right. Um, is, it the, uh, last, uh, Don asked, is it the only piece of 20 count gridded that I have, or have, it, uh, or have I had previous ones? Um, I don't know if they've been printed off kilter as well. Um, so that's the, I've got two pieces of it and they're both the same. So I'm guessing that is probably how the 20 count comes. Um, Dawn was thinking about trying some. So she just wanted to know. Um, I mean, if you've not used like 25 count and 28 count, then I suppose you're not used to how the grids line up on there. So you'd get used to the grids on 20 count. But yeah, I, I don't like them at all. They just, it just doesn't line up right for me. So I'm gonna say, I mean, you can always try it if you've never used pre-gridded before and see how you get on with it. But for me, it's it's not right. <laughs> it's wrong. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know why it's printed how it is, but I'm gonna say it doesn't quite cover the holes. I suppose it does follow in line. I mean, I don't. You can't see anything with my fingers in there. Um, like here, you can see like you've got one hole and another hole, but you can tell where the grey line is. Where with the twenty count, it seems to be in between the two holes. If you like, it's a lot thicker grey line, um, so you can't really tell the difference between which which block is which. I hope that makes sense. Sure, someone to know how my crochet was going or if I not had time to, to do any. Um, so I've started my granny square, well, never ending granny square blanket. Got a couple of rows done on that one. I haven't really had much chance to do a lot on it. I'm gonna try and get some done this week just to get it moving along a bit more. Well, so far it's going okay. I think I've still got to work on my tension a bit. <laughs> That seems to be a little bit um, too tight, but we'll get there. I can hear a lorry eating the tree again outside. We're not getting more food. <laughs> Next one is from. Chrissy, 
who asks, she just she enjoys watching my stitch with me and stitching away. Do you always start your cross um, up from the bottom left and down top right and never start up top right and down bottom left? Yes, yeah, I always start my four crosses the same way. Um, so it's always bottom left to top right, bottom right, top left. I always do it that way unless nine out of ten it's only when I'm doing ten stitch. If I can't get my needle through like there where I am now, then I will go up above it there to bring it back down. But that's only for like especially in some of these areas. On no, you can't see. Uh some of, on the other side where it's really high confetti. Um and I can't get the needle through. Um uh, through the same hole. Or through the bottom hole. So I went in via the top to down, but nine out of ten. It's always bottom left to top right. It's just how I prefer to stitch it. I think going from the top down, top to the bottom is like if you're stitching up. But because I stitch down the page, it will always, I don't know, it just works better for me that way. <laughs> so the next one is from Nick. Let me just count these first. One, two, three. So, obviously, I've been off for eight weeks with my finger. And Nick wants to know, how does it work with a workplace injury like yours? Um, so, over in New Zealand, you get 80% of your income paid. Um, and work allows you to top it up with a, uh, to 100% with a sick day or annual leave day. Until you go back to work. Or run out of any leave. Um, So how would it work in the UK by comparison? Also over here, when you're 80 years old, you have to reset res your license test, which includes a medical. Okay, so that's, a, that's going on about their driver's licenses. Um, right, so. With regards to work cover. So yes, I got, I think it was a bit more than 80%. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what the, actual amount is, but it wasn't full wage. Uh, but they they never gave me the option of topping up. So I got full wage. Um, so I was, my money was short each week, which I thought they may have topped up with my sick days, since I've got loads of them, because I'm not normally sick. <laughs> um, but no, they didn't give me that option. Um, in the UK, for comparison, um, sick pay, you get 100% sick pay for, I think it's three months. After three months, it goes down to, I think it's half pay, if I remember correctly, it's been a while. Um, I think it's half pay for the next three months. And then once you get to six months, you get nothing. <laughs> so it depends on if you're long-term sick or whatever. If it's an accident that was done at work, then you get 100% pay. Because obviously it'll go through their insurance. So if it was an accident at work, you get 100% pay for, I think it's for the duration of your injury because work have to pay out for any medical expenses, etc. Medical expenses over there you don't really have um, because you have the NHS, so you don't pay for anything. Uh, Medicine-wise, obviously, uh, if it's medicine, then yes, you have to pay for your prescription, um, but if it's like operations or anything like that, then you don't have to pay for anything over there unless you go private. So it depends how it all, depends how, what kind of injury you've got and what you need to have done. Um, so yeah, so work will cover, obviously, if it has to go private or whatever, over there. 
but nine out of ten you get full pay for three months and then three months are half pay unless it was a job place injury then they have to pay you um full pay driver's license driver's licenses over in the uk um i think you have to have a medical once you hit now uh, is it 75 i think 75 i think you're meant to have a medical and you have to renew your license every year, I believe. Um, so you have to have like a full eye test and everything. If they deem you not fit, then you can't drive no more. Um, but I think you can keep your license for as long as you want to over in the UK. I don't think you have to surrender at any particular age. Um, but yeah, from the age of somewhere in the 70s. It's either 70 or 75. Somewhere around that, where you have to have a medical. Uh, you don't have to reset a test, you just have to have a full medical and prove that you can, you're can. you still capable of driving, that your faculties are all there. Where am I? Next one across there. Next thing is from Jane. Oh, I can't remember this stitch with me, so um, but she put, how about using one of my challenge pieces as a focus piece? So, my challenge piece is this one. <laughs> That's my main challenge piece. So, I don't use it as a full focus piece, but I do use it. I do stitch on it more on a weekend. Either Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, it'll get full one of the full days. So, kind of like one of my focus pieces. So my challenge piece is used well, as much as I can. Um, obviously, I still want to get work done on my other ones. I think I might have to use it a bit more than normal because the Lara seems to be tearing away from me. If she posted up, she'd done like what was it? 2,400 or even more in one day. It's like, what? Well, she didn't have any sleep, so... <laughs> But yeah, I think she's getting close to her quarter. She wants to get to, well, she wanted to get to quarter done by the end of March, which theoretically I wanted to do as well. So I'm a little bit behind. I'm not even anywhere near 25%. I'm on 18. <laughs> so I've still got a fair bit to go. So yeah, so mind you, I think because of all the confetti in the other part, that's what slowed me down a lot. So I'm hoping I might be able to start getting a bit of a move on. Now, I don't think this page is as confetti heavy. So, next one is from Neil. Um, he wanted to know how I got into working at a timber yard. <laughs> so, over here, when I moved over, um, I have all my qualifications and everything from the UK, but they are not recognised over here. So, like, all my food hygiene, um, my accountancy that I did over there, and none of it is recognised over here. It has to be an Australian accredited certificate. So I couldn't get into any of the jobs that I was used to doing. Um... I did try getting into one or two call centres, but because I wasn't a permanent Australian resident, they would, they would not allow me to work there. Um, I did my, it's called RSA, which is Responsible Service of Alcohol, and my RSG, which is Responsible Service of Gambling, um, so that I could work in a um, restaurant, bar, whatever. 
Um, I applied for a couple of those jobs, but never heard anything from them. And then I say I got the job working in the service station or petrol station, wherever you're from. Um, but that was only casual work. And that one was only six hours. Yeah, six hours a night. I used to work midnight till six in the morning. Um, but the management there were idiots. They used to spy on you. They just used to watch you all the time on CCTV. And then they'd phone you up asking you why you'd done something. Or it's like with, they do hot food. Um, so something like sausage rolls and stuff like that. And now for hot food, you're only allowed to keep it out for a certain length of time. So if after that time you were then you removed it to throw it away, they they would ring you up and ask you why you'd removed it and to put it back in the cabinet until it was sold. And it's like, but it's been out for like four or five hours. It's like don't matter, put it back in until it's sold. Um, but they were the management were from overseas. So so yeah, there were a bit of uh, things. I mean, you didn't get a break. Um, well, I didn't get a break because there was only me in the server at the time. On the night shift, there's only one person. Um, so I weren't allowed to, you couldn't get take a break. So if it was quiet, I would still take a break anyway. I didn't care. Um, and I want to know why I'd left the desk. Uh, so there's no one here. <laughs> there's no one around. Um, and then I would like stock up the cigarettes. Now they kept the cigarettes in a safe. Now they were waiting on a cigarette delivery. So there wasn't much in the safe as it was. There was hardly any cigarettes in there whatsoever. And as I shut the safe to take the cigarettes out that I needed, but I knew I was going back to get more, the door didn't shut properly. And it, I didn't realise, and it opened up again. So they told me off for leaving the safe open too long. Is that? But there's nothing in it. <laughs> Literally, there was like maybe about ten packets of cigarettes in there. That was it. So yeah, I got, I got told off for leaving the safe open. I was like, okay, whatever. I was like, you lot are just idiots. I'm not working for you much longer. And then Shane was already working at the timber yard, and the lad who I took his job. He got sacked. They asked if anyone knew anybody who wanted work, and Shane said, me. I said, right, get him in. So I quit the petrol station and went and worked at the timber yard. And then I said, the lad who, whose job I got, he's now back. So that's how I ended up working in the timber yard. And then we obviously moved out to where we are. We've only got the one car, so it's like, well, I can't work anywhere else until I can get another car. And I can't get another car until I can get some money saved up. <laughs> so it's uh, swings and roundabouts. So it's a case of save up to get a new car so then I can get a new job. Or stay working at the timber yard. So at the moment, it's staying working at the timber yard until I can save up enough money to get a new car. The second the price of second-hand cars are coming down now, so they're not as expensive as they were. Because for some reason during the pandemic, because people couldn't get new cars in, the price of cars, used cars, went through the roof. They were ridiculous. So something that may have cost say a thousand dollars went up to something like. $8,000. It was absolutely crazy. Car yards just being greedy because obviously they weren't making any money from new cars. But now they're on the way back down again because new cars have started coming in. So hopefully, all I need to save was much money to buy a second car. And then Shane can have the second hand car and I'll continue with the Mazda. <laughs> He doesn't know that yet. Oh, and 
Yes, the... Uh, to answer the other question. The... Somebody else asked this one as well, um, asking how my cat was over in the UK after the visit to the vets. So, um, as I said, she had to go there twice. Uh, first time they lanced it, second time they lanced it, and then gave some antibiotics. And since then it's all cleared up, it's all good. Rimmel just says she looks funny because she's got a ball packed on her tail now. She's just waiting for her hair to grow back. <laughs> I'm assuming that'll grow back soon. They generally grow back pretty quick. But yeah, vet fees over. As Neil said, vet fees over there have gone ridiculously stupid. Yes. I think that's it. Yep, that's all we've got. That's all she wrote. Tails telling somebody off out there. That was right, though. <laughs> right. So, what are we at? 55 minutes altogether. So, I think I will end that one here. As soon as I've finished that strand. Uh, so, I'll end that one here. So, what we've we done? We have done. Oh, I was one stitch off. 299 stitches. <laughs> Never mind. So, it's not bad going. So, thank you for sticking with me. So, again, if you do have any questions or comments, then please feel free to drop those down below. So, yeah. Uh, so feel free to drop those down below or you can email me email address as always is dizzystitcher at gmail.com or I'm on Instagram as dizzystitcher um, so you can message me on that um, so yeah so that's it so hopefully I can get another stitch from me done again next week um, so until then whether it be my next update video or my next stitch with me whichever one order you watch me uh, take care, stay safe, happy stitching, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now. Okay, so, almost forgot. I said I was going to give another, do another giveaway on my Stitch With Me. So, um, if you watch the update video, there's a giveaway on there. There's a giveaway here. And you can enter both, so that's fine. Um, so, this one is for a chart that I was sent that I don't think I'm going to stitch. And let me take it out of the plastic so you can see. Now it's by the blue flower. I know a fair few people like these. I can't get it in. And it's called Gathering Honey, which is this one. Now it does give you a list of all the um, DMC numbers, or you can. Kitty up in weeks, gentle art, and classic color works. So, I'm going to give that away now. I've got a couple of weeks and classic color work cores, but I can't have one. <laughs> so, I'll send it with the one color which is sea spray, which is called for. So, I'll send it with that as well. And it says to stitch it on some linen, 40 count linen. So I'll see if I've got any linen as well, the same size. I should have really looked at this before, but never mind. Um, and I'll send you out the I'll send you the linen as well with it. So if you are interested in this one, uh, we'll just use the word flower. So just say the word flower, and uh, we'll do that. So this one I'll do it a bit longer um, because I know not everyone gets around to watching the stitch with me's <laughs> when they're brought out, and they sometimes play catch up. So this one. I will give it three weeks. So on my main one, I gave two weeks. This one, I'll give three weeks. So I'll get an extra week. So again, if you are interested, use the word flower. Uh, and then uh, we'll get that sent out to, yeah. And as I say, I'll find a, some, fabric out, uh, some fabric out as well. Um, but obviously whoever wins it, I'll sort it out with them as to whether they want 40 count or 28 count or whatever, but we'll sort it out. So 
There we go, so good luck guys. So again, just pop that in uh, the word flowers in the comments if you are interested. All right, so again, thanks for watching guys. Bye-bye.